So I'm from Birmingham. I'm as surprised as you are. And <laughs> I support West Brom. Are there any football supporters in? Yeah. Oh, some people. Oh, you support. Who do you support? Ipswich Town. Ipswich Town. Yeah. Hey! Fuck yeah. <laughs> They're taking over! <laughs> he hello there. Are you, is everything okay? <laughs> are, they doing, are they good? Are they doing all right? So I started becoming a fan of West Brom because my friend Karen said that they're the best team. Statistically inaccurate, that. <laughs> um, so we went to watch one game. We went to watch one in the um, stadium. So I forgot the word stadium there. I was going to say velodrome. I can't do football. <laughs> one in the stadium. But before that, we went to this proper old man pub in Birmingham, and, like, the woman behind the bar, how to describe her, she looked like a scrotum. <laughs> she didn't like me, because I ordered a white wine spritzer. <laughs> Fuck's that? <laughs> soda water and white wine. She went behind the bar for a worrying amount of time, came back with a pint of soda water <laughs> and a full bottle of dessert wine. <laughs> I don't know, that would be a fiver. <laughs> Best night of my life. I <laughs> love the football. Oh, I, did, I got caught out at one point because I shouted, come on the lads. Apparently that's not acceptable as a phrase. <laughs> yes, I live, uh, I live in, um, in Hall Green with my mother and father, Dave and Helen, great couple of lads. All right. And, um, <laughs> this is my lad knee, by the way. Oh, she! Um, I don't know if there are any mothers in or if anyone's had a mother, but... Um, <laughs> My mother, a great warrior, my mother. She's got worse as she's got older as well. She bought, me, she bought me a first aid kit for the car. I do mainly motorway driving. Not sure how useful a first aid kit's going to come in in a smash on the M6. <laughs> I'm going to ring 999 and go, well, my condition is my legs are crushed to bits and I've got a bit of metal sticking out of my abdomen and according to this thermometer, a slightly higher than normal temperature. <laughs> send the fire brigade to cut me out. I've got these tiny little scissors. <laughs> I was doing shows. I was in Abu Dhabi, Doha and Dubai. Friends of mine told me not to go to the Middle East because they said that they don't like, and I quote, my lot, is what they said. <laughs> not sure what they mean by my lot. Presumably fly fishers. <laughs> they, um, they jail homosexuals in those countries. Not sure of the logic of that one, really. Oh, you like men? We'll put you in a box with some. Not a punishment. <laughs> Come on, try harder, lads. <laughs> I have to be weird with someone in real life recently. I went on, I went on a stag do. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> I'm trying to get that right. I think it's all in the neck. <laughs> Fuck you up. Like, that's his place, isn't it? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's amazing how close to vomiting that is. This is a front for insecurity. I've got it. <laughs> Struggle to connect with my father. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, I'm actually quite lonely. Yes, I've got it. No, I didn't go with absolute lads like that. I went with um, old school friends of mine. Um, we went to Lisbon. They have a nickname for me, which is why we've done the show at this uh, theatre. It is The Duchess. So I am The Duchess at The Duchess. It sort of fits, doesn't it, the nickname? They've got a whole backstory for The Duchess. The Duchess has a butler called René. I don't know why he's called René, but I love it. And René will provide people for The Duchess to make love to that he's found on Tinder. I'm obsessed with Tinder. If you don't know what I'm on about. It's a dating app where you get a little picture of a human, and if you like the look of them, you swipe right, and if you don't, you swipe left, and you never hear from them again. Quite an abrupt way of measuring a human, I feel. It wouldn't work in real life. You wouldn't walk around a bar going, no, that's a bit much. <laughs> ah! I mean, maybe you would, I don't know how you live your lives, but um, they're nice guys, they're nice guys. We've been friends for years. But there was a new guy on the stag who I'd not met before, Johnny, in the TA. Johnny actually works mainly in financial services, but he went on about the TA a lot. I don't even know what it stands for. I think it just means the army. I don't know. <laughs> How would I describe Johnny? A full kiant would be about right. He, he'd met gay people before, he'd met straight people, but he'd not met anyone bisexual. I'm bisexual. I'm not sure if that was made clear to you at the door. Um, <laughs> Out of interest, are there any bisexuals in? You don't have to cheer if you don't want to. Woo! Oh, loads of you. Hi, hello, how welcome, welcome. Um, somebody down here, great, marvellous. Do you get when 
When, people, when you say you're bisexual, do people, are people confused by that sometimes? Yes, you're nodding. So this is the thing. I get, it, I get it's confusing, because I was confused when I first emerged sexually. My first kiss, when I was about 16, was with a woman outside the Snobs nightclub in Birmingham. If you, if you don't know it, the name is ironic. And um, we're both, both very drunk, and she burped in my mouth. And, uh, and that triggered my gag reflex. So I, I was then sick on her shoes. No, they're only from New Look, chill out. But it made, me, it made me think for a long time that I was full gay because I thought that women made me physically sick. That's what I thought for a long time. Do you, people say you're greedy as well. Oh, fucking hell, spare me. Right, this is the thing. It's not about the frequency of sex. It's about who you're attracted to. That's literally all the word means. I, um, I can't speak for other bisexuals. I feel like I can't speak for other men, but I feel like there's a presumption that all men are up for it at all times. Like all men are going like, oh yeah, fuck that whenever. Like, I don't have that libido. Maybe that makes me unusual. I just don't have it. I look at a very comfortable sofa in the same way that I think most people look at a sexy person <laughs> for the things I do to that. <laughs> if I lie down in a snack, that's what I do. If Tinder for sofas, swipe right the whole bloody day. That's what I would do. <laughs> the big wang theory, I like that, that's good. And then instead of a touch of frost, a touch of cock. <laughs> Dongs of praise, that's more like it. Dongs of praise. Well done. Jennifer likes that. Fresh Prince of Bel End. <laughs> yeah. Third cock from the bum, that's nice. That's nice, sweet one that one, isn't it? Lovely. A place in the bum, <laughs> lovely, nice. Homos under the hammer, that sounds like a threat. <laughs> Thomas the wank engine, that's it. That's all we're after. But then I started, started going out and there's all these jazzy bars now, all these sort of quirky places. There's a gin parlour in Birmingham now. I went into the gin parlour, I ordered a gin and tonic. I thought that was appropriate. Very quirky guy behind the bar, tattoos, piercings, beard. He was like, we have 200 different types of gin. Is there a type of gin that you've had before? Yeah, I think it was as to price. I think it was. <laughs> Didn't have it, so not that exclusive. <laughs> had, a, had a vodka diet coke in the end, and I got chatting to this guy who was very thin and very pallid. He sort of he looked like someone had dressed up a mini milk. He didn't look right. <laughs> and he was chatting at me mile a minute for about half an hour, and then after about half an hour, he went, "Oh, I've lost my coke." And I think because I was drinking a Diet Coke and I was a bit drunk, in the moment, I thought he meant Coca-Cola. So I was like, well, where'd you have it last? He's like, in the toilet. Like, well, there's no flat surfaces in there. You must have left it on the floor or something. He's like, no, I've lost my Coke. I was like, well, I'll get you some Coke. Still think he meant Coca-Cola. He's like, what, do you know a dealer? I was like, don't see how that's relevant. I mean, I know, I know an art dealer I could call in the morning, but that seems very off topic. I was like, I'll get you some Coke. So I started walking to the bar and then realised on the way to the bar what he actually meant. I'm now on a drugs run for some stranger. I mean, this and I don't take drugs. I've no idea how you pre cure drugs. I know, I know you can order them online now, which I find absolutely hysterical as an idea that they can go, sorry you were out. We left 50 kilograms of smack with your neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> did, did my cocaine arrive? No, but Saj is really mowing that fucking lawn. <laughs> no idea how it works, do I? So I needed a wee, I needed a wee, so I thought, I'll go and have a wee, I'll work out what to do. So I went into a cubicle, because I get stage fright, I can't urinate next to other men, and uh, thank you for laughing, it helps. And I uh, <laughs> went for a wee at my knob, and I popped the lid down on the toilet, and behind the lid was this little packet of powder. And I can see how we would have missed it, it just slipped down the back, but it created this moral quandary, really, because I don't have a problem with people taking drugs. Do whatever you like with your life. But I know cocaine, particularly, the way it's produced, the way it's brought into the country, there's a lot of blood on it. Pretty much every gram, somebody dies for it. It's a really horrendous industry that you're funding if you take it or buy it, and it makes me very uncomfortable and sad, really. But also, it's not my property, it's not up to me, it's not my decision, so I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I made 50 pounds. <laughs> punchline for you there, you're welcome. <laughs> That's a heavy, oh, it's a bloody lecture now, it's a lecture. 